PTSD. All of this while never compromising on our nation leading efforts to improve youth mental health with more school-based health professionals, new mobile apps, and platforms like Saluna to engage more kids earlier in prevention and screening. Think about a world in which we did nothing about this crisis when we fell prey to the cynicism, negativity, and the rhetoric uh, and just rolled over and said it was simply unfixable. The same, by the way, is true of the red state approach to crime. <laughs> they couldn't be more divorced from reality. Their entire crime agenda narrative is about diversion and distraction. They create fear and division. Meanwhile, people are, are gunned down at higher rates in Republican states than in Democratic states. Eight, eight of the 10 most violent murder states in America are red states. Even cities like Jacksonville and, and Memphis have significantly higher homicide rates than cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles. But that's not what you hear. <laughs> Instead, you hear wall-to-wall -wall right-wing media coverage about lawless blue cities and blue states. In fact, California's violent crime rate is about half of what it was in the 1990s, 1992, a lower homicide rate now than 29 other states, including Florida and Texas. And property crime, as an example, in San Francisco is down 32%. In Oakland, with the California Highway Patrol in partnership with local law enforcement, we've seen a decline, a remarkable decline, 33% in crime. This is because in California, <laughs> We take public safety seriously. We take it as a problem to solve, not just to flog on cable news. We didn't wake up to this yesterday. Beginning in 2019, we funded local police and prosecutors specifically to go after retail theft, not by defunding the police, but by recruiting, among other things, 1,000 CHP officers. But we're not satisfied until we get the job done. And to do that, I recognize we need to do more to clarify existing laws. And while it's true that California has some of the toughest felony theft thresholds in the nation, we need to do more to go after professional theft rings more forcefully. We look forward to advancing this package of reforms this year. Our work on public safety also means we protect the victims of domestic violence with expanded restraining orders. We've cracked down on ghost guns. We've gone toe to toe with the gun lobby and ideological judges who advance their agenda. And we won't stop fighting because protecting Californians is our most important job. You know, 30 years ago, California's gun homicide rate was 50% above the national average. Now, today, it's 33% below the national average. That's because of our gun safety laws. And red states' refusal to follow California's lead has led to catastrophic impacts. Let's put it this way. If every state in America and California's gun death rate over the past decade, 140,000 Americans would be alive today. That's the cost of fealty to the ideological agenda by the National Rifle Association. 140,000 brothers and sisters and sons and daughters, mothers and fathers would be alive today. For lawmakers in, in red states, with respect, bravery sometimes just simply means ignoring the best interests of their constituents, I guess in doing whatever the donors and the lobbyists tell them to do. That's not the approach we take in California. But we're facing unprecedented challenges. Not a, not a word, not a single word from them about the Supreme Court's perversion of the Second Amendment that allows, for example, machine guns and weapons of war to proliferate on the streets of America. It's a sickness. J just a week ago, as a proof point, Republicans in the United States Senate refused to even outlaw bump stocks, the same so-called accessory that a gunman in Las Vegas used to kill 60 people, wound over 400, and dislodge over 1,000 rounds in just 11 minutes. That's why their states, with respect, are less safe. 